This is my 20 inch 2GHz iMac G5. It's currently running Sorbet Leopard, an unofficial release that I think has really improved this machine. But can we do one better? Today I'm going to attempt to install Phoenix Linux, which is a modern Linux distro designed specifically for PowerPC. Join me as we explore whether this is actually worth doing. So, I mentioned that this machine currently runs Sorbet Leopard. It also features a 2GHz PowerPC G5 processor and 2GB of RAM. At 19 years old, this machine still feels zippy. Swapping out the hard disk for an SSD definitely helps. But under macOS, it's not going to run modern software. Things have moved on, but that doesn't mean it is a slow experience. In Disk Utility, you can see that I have two partitions on this drive and the empty one is where we'll be installing Phoenix, in the hopes that a modern Linux operating system will breathe new life into this retro machine. So I've downloaded the ISO, and we're going to use Toast to burn it to a DVD. And now that that's finished successfully, we can reboot the machine and attempt to boot from the DVD. The install process is actually quite friendly. We're greeted with a welcome screen, and once we're booted, it takes us through the normal questions like location, keyboard layout, and time zone. The installer also prompted me to provide some driver files for the airport card in this machine. I managed to find them on GitHub, and I put them on a USB for the installer to load. The installer also has a friendly partitioning interface. It turned out that I could go ahead and erase the partition I'd left blank for Phoenix, and then just use the guided partitioning option to use the largest block of free space. The installer automatically created an ext4 partition, as well as boot and swap partitions. After reading through the changes and accepting that suggestion, I was able to install Phoenix with no issues at all. And there we have it, Phoenix is installed. The issues though were about to make themselves known. I decided to set myself a couple of tasks, the first being to connect to my Wi-Fi network so that I could log into my home server and grab a wallpaper file, and then change the wallpaper to that. This all worked fine, but it was painfully slow. The system was very slow to respond to clicks, and it felt like perhaps GPU acceleration was broken. After I'd changed the wallpaper, I checked the Phoenix Companion app, which confirmed that my GPU was accelerated. I also tried the suggested boot flags for this card, the Radeon 9600, but the result was the same. Web browsing was painful. Trying to access Reddit crashed the whole system, and I couldn't even access my sponsor PCBWay's website for the ad read. There was a cool app called Phoenix Tranquilo, which was a soundscape builder. It literally just has some cool sounds and it lives in your system tray. Not that I could do much with it because the system was so, so slow. I decided to go to the Phoenix Companion app again and install the suite of curated apps. It all looked great, but I had to give up because the download was prohibitively slow. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not really sure what else to say at this point other than the terminal and other CLI based programs like Nano are some of the only things that work well. Even attempting to use Synaptic Package Manager to install NeoFetch which for some reason wouldn't install via the terminal, was a pain. Which leads me to think, what could I actually use this for? Yes, it's very cool that this is modern Linux, and it's technically amazing that this 19-year-old PowerPC machine can do this, but in this state, all I could really think to do with it was text processing, and even that was painful. And so if that's all we can do, well, I think we may as well just use macOS. And now that we're back on macOS, we can check out PCBWay, this video sponsor. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for anyone who is looking for CNC machining, 3D printing, and the production of prototype PCBs. Whether you're a hobbyist or even a large company, PCBWay provides an easy, affordable, and high-quality service. Their seventh project design contest is still on, and I've really been enjoying having a look through some of the examples. The contest invites participants to submit projects which focus on creativity, complexity, and innovation in electronics and engineering. It's all really cool stuff, and there are great prizes to be won, so make sure to check it out, the link will be in the description. And check out PCBWay for all of your geeky, creative projects. I'm always seeing Reddit posts and videos like, can you use a PowerPC in 2024? and can you bring your power Mac back to life? 
and it's definitely a narrative that I used to subscribe to. The way of thinking that says you need to bring your old machines as up to date as possible and squeeze the most out of them 20 years after they were released. But that just doesn't make sense. Here's a 19 year old G5 running its maximum official operating system, Leopard. And it's a very good experience, so long as you run era appropriate software. There's a massive repository of older software that'll run very happily on machines like this. So instead of trying to make a G4 or G5 your daily secondary computer in 2024 and beyond, why don't we just start accepting them for what they're actually good at, running software that was designed for them. And it's really up to you. Do you want to run old design software? old games or get some distraction free writing done. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Yes, Phoenix Linux and other projects like it are very cool, but I think we should be using these machines as a window into the past. And if you're old enough for nostalgia purposes. I want to know what you think about all this, so leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, thanks to you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.